In this video, we'll be covering the topic of technology development as we talk about a number of different models that help us to understand the macro scale process of change within complex engineered systems. We'll be firstly discussing why evolution is a key feature to complex systems and talk about what exactly technology development is. We'll go on to briefly introduce you to the model of a fitness landscape looking at the dynamics of evolution and the adaptive cycle model to disruptive innovation. This map shows the continental US power transmission grid consisting of about 300,000 kilometers of line operated by approximately 500 companies. Most power grids in Western Europe and the United States started out as local enterprises but over the course of time Due to demand, they have had to evolve to become the integrated national and multinational networks that they are today. The industrial systems that we inherit today, like this power grid, were not designed as integrated systems, but gradually evolved over time and are thus best understood as the product of hundreds or even thousands of years of technology evolution patched together. And we can see this most clearly within emerging markets. Due to recent rapid economic growth, we can see pre-industrial technologies coexisting with industrial and post-industrial information technologies all in one big mashup. These massive networks like power grids and global supply chains illustrate why evolution is very important within complex systems. Because they're too complex to build from scratch, we never get a clean slate. One person or organization could not create the internet with all its content. These things only really get created by many different actors with different local level agendas. We can't just come in, smack down our design and build the whole thing just like that from scratch. These things get built over a prolonged period of time, primarily due to the local incentives of individuals and local organizations as they act and react to each other's behavior, self-organizing to create patterns of coordination, which both compete and cooperate to give us some kind of emergent global pattern. And all the time, evolution is acting on the system in order to define which patterns of organization are best suited and which are not. Whereas self-organization is an internal process, evolution is an external force that acts on the whole system as such, it is a macro scale phenomena. Evolution is a particular type of systems development. So before we can begin to analyze it, let's first define what we mean by the development of technology. As previously discussed, a technology is a system that performs the function of efficiently solving a particular constraint. We can then think about this idea of technology development as an increase in its efficiency, where efficiency is defined as a ratio of inputted resources to the output of solution, resources of both natural capital and human resources. Rationalization is the making of a process or system more efficient. We can then define a simple parameter spanning from low efficiency to high efficiency with rationalization being the function that maps the system to a different value along this metric. This gives us some basic context to what we mean when we talk about the development of technology. To illustrate this, let's think about a technology for grinding flour, what is called a flour mill. At the low end of the spectrum, we will have a technology that requires a high input of resources with limited throughput. You might have one of the original stone mills developed a few thousand years ago, driven by manual labor at a low throughput of flour. Through the process of rationalization, we've made this system more efficient at grinding flour. Thus, at the high end of the spectrum, we have a contemporary mill that is automated with a high throughput of flour to the energy inputted. This process of technological rationalization has not only increased the rate of throughput to the system, but also reduced the requirements for physical resources and human capital by automating the process. At the beginning of this process of rationalization, the system was very inefficient and thus there was still a lot of value to be gained by rationalizing. But by the time we get to the end of this process, 
The system may be very efficient, but there is often very little value to be gained by increased rationalization. But a technology doesn't exist in isolation. It is part of a whole ecosystem of other technologies, and its utility is also defined by how well it fits into that environment. As we've previously discussed, technologies today rarely stand alone. They more often form part of service networks that deliver functionality, and thus their effectiveness is also largely in their capacity to interoperate with other technologies. And provide a required differentiated function within these service systems. In order to capture these two factors of how efficient a technology is and its relation to other technologies, we can use the model of what is called a fitness landscape, which is a three-dimensional representation of the technology landscape, like a rugged mountain range. It has points of different elevation. With these different elevations representing how efficient that technology is, the higher you are up on one of these mountains, the better or fitter that technology is at solving the problem at hand. But also, similar technologies that interoperate are clustered together on the landscape. Through innovation, rationalization, and evolution, technologies try to climb to higher peaks on the landscape. Because different technologies need to interoperate, they are interdependent, meaning the fitness of one technology is dependent upon others. For example, there are over 25,000 companies building technologies with Bluetooth capabilities. If the protocol was to be significantly altered or even discontinued, this would affect the entire ecosystem. Because of this interdependency, the landscape is not static, but in fact dancing around in response to all the small and large changes that are being made to the individual technologies. But also due to the fact that the actual problem that they're trying to solve is also changing at different stages of technological development, new possibilities and challenges emerge, fundamentally altering the landscape. The model of a fitness landscape is a powerful model for understanding the evolution of complex adaptive systems, but it gives us a somewhat narrow vision to the evolution of technology, because new technologies and ideas can create whole new industries and landscapes. Technology is just one part in the broader technical framework of what is called STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As we know, our technical development is intimately interconnected with and dependent upon these other domains. This acronym should really read MSET in order to represent the process through which our technical body of knowledge develops and the set of dependencies between them. Technology is dependent upon engineering, which is dependent upon science, which is dependent in turn upon the formal systems, primarily mathematics. There may be many. Non-linear cross-pollinations within the domain of technology and engineering that drive innovation, but ultimately, new major technological paradigm shifts require breakthroughs in math and fundamental science. This is most evident when we look at how the breakthrough of the modern scientific revolution gave birth to a new set of engineering methods and the industrial revolution. These major paradigm shifts result in the whole landscape changing. Not only is the set of solutions redefined, that is to say, the set of engineering methods and technologies, but also the actual problem space itself may be redefined, because that's what theory and science do. They redefine how we see the world, and thus what exactly the problem that we're trying to solve is. We might call this thinking outside the box. We're not just trying to define what the solution is, but actually redefine the problem. The two can co-evolve, because ultimately, what we're trying to do here is solve problems. We can do that by changing the problem or changing the solution. For example, the shift from a pre-modern to a modern view of the world, based upon science, redefined the problem space that we're trying to solve, and that's a real paradigm shift and change in the whole landscape. Evolution then is a search over this landscape in order to find new and better solutions to the given environmental challenges. 
and evolution involves a number of key stages. Firstly, the production of a variety of solutions to the given problem. Secondly, the application of these innovations to the problem to see which is best suited. And thirdly, selection, in order to remove those variants that were least effective and make the efficient solutions more prevalent in the next life cycle to the system. Lastly, we need to be able to iterate on this process for a number of life cycles. Each iteration of the process should change the location of individual technologies on the landscape. The adaptive cycle gives us a visual representation to the stages in the process of evolution. The adaptive cycle is a model used to capture the different stages that ecosystems go through during the course of their development. But this model is equally applicable to all complex adaptive systems, from social organizations to the development of new industries and technologies. It defines the macro state to the process of evolution during four distinct stages of development, including growth, conservation, collapse, and reorganization. In the growth phase, new scientific or fundamental engineering knowledge provides a new fertile ground on which innovation can happen. Without incumbents, many new possible solutions can emerge. An example of this growth phase at the moment might be the area of 3D printing. Without an industry established enough to support any big players, it is full of small tinkerers and startups that are created in garages. In the conservation stage, some technologies have proven more efficient and by leveraging the positive feedback loop of economics of scale are able to outperform any newcomers to the industry. Economics of scale creates high barriers to entry as the industry becomes consolidated and mature. This is a period of maximum efficiency and minimum flexibility with all available resources held within a productive configuration making the environment conservative towards change. During the release phase, some external environmental disturbance such as a disruptive innovation eventually triggers the collapse of the system as elements have become inflexible from over-exploiting a single niche. The relationships are broken with the elements and resources they held becoming re-released. The elements that remain after the release stage will reorganize. In this stage, the connectedness of the system is low, but the potential is very high. Therefore, novelty arises. Foreign elements that would in other stages be outcompeted can become established at this stage. The growth stage follows and a new cycle begins. The adaptive cycle is a very generalized model and we are far from fully understanding the dynamics behind it. But it does capture some of the macro scale stages that are characteristic to the development of adaptive systems, developing through an evolutionary process that engenders some dynamic between order and chaos. In this video, we've been looking at some of the key factors involved in the process of evolution within our technology landscape, discussing why evolution is important and what we mean by technology development. We've talked about the fitness landscape model and how paradigm shifts in science can result in a whole new problem space emerging and an ensuing new set of engineering solutions. We looked at how evolution can be understood in terms of a set of stages through which variation is created. These variants are left to adapt before having selection performed upon them. And through countless iterations of this cycle, with one cycle building upon the previous, we can get the development of complex systems without anyone having designed them. This evolutionary approach to the development of technology is very different to our traditional industrial age paradigm. But through new technologies like biotech, nanotech, and information technology, it is increasingly one that we're learning to harness.